um, this shredded story, which was broadcast not that long after I was diagnosed. Um, and seeing the new ado and seeing this uh, woman on TV who couldn't talk, so couldn't move, suddenly having access to communication, just really gave me a lot of hope. And I also spoke to Dob, my uh, brilliant neurologist, and she said, yep, when the time came, he put me in touch with you. Yeah, so we applied to the NDIS. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really thrilled that the NDIS has now approved um, funding and I've actually got the new nerd on my wrist. Um, look, I think it helped me to have confidence that it would work and I could I could make it work. For instance, I lost the ability to talk and then had to kind of try and make some technology work, it would be a lot harder. Upside down, I mean, the actual diagnosis it's pretty devastating. Um, the word used to describe life expectancy was progress. So we're told the progress of the disease was typically two to three years. Um, and I just had those words going round in my head. And so I think for the whole family, we were really devastated by her illness and what that meant for her and for us. But it's over five and a half years later and I'm still here, um, which I'm just I'm so grateful for. Um, part of his advice to me on that day about how to live with MND was take things week by week and try and make the most of each day. And I've kind of held onto that right through. Um, and look, I think sometimes people ask about how it's possible to be positive or to cope with something like this. Um, and I've just, I do have so much to be grateful for. I've got so such a fantastic neurologist and care team um, and family and friends who just have embraced me and my husband and daughter, my, my wonderful husband and wonderful daughter. Um, yeah, so life's really worth living. Things that people don't think about maybe, um, kind of little jokes here and there and watching my little cry, <laughs> watching my gorgeous daughter Year seven now. So she was in year two when I was diagnosed and I'm just so proud of her. Fairly soon after my diagnosis, certainly I had the advice from the MND Association that it's good to do things, get things in place before you think you need them because things can suddenly one day you could do something and the next day it's gone. Um, and I've been lucky that I've had advice from people around me and kind of wanted to take the advice of doing things early. So um, it's, look, I would, um, I would recommend to people with MND that they do try and get things in place before you think you need them. And I remember quite soon after Kirsty was diagnosed, um, she and I went to an information day that the MND Association ran. And one of the really, um, really helpful components of that day was a session um, on, on maintaining communication. So various assisted speech technologies. So I don't think we, in our wildest dreams, imagined something as neat and effective as the Neuronode, but we came out of that, well certainly I came out of that session thinking, well it was actually like a huge weight had been lifted. Um, 
things that you might think are um, a sign of deterioration um, actually go off in ways to improve your independence and improve your quality of life. And certainly that's the case with Duodote. I wonder if I'm an MND pacifist and part of that is learning to live with it, to be at peace with, not, not to kind of welcome it and not to, I certainly want MND to disappear from the world, um, but to be part of being at peace in yourself is to embrace technology and other things that help you live well as long as possible. I think the idea of not being able to communicate is quite frightening, uh, both the person who can't talk but also the people who can't talk or hear from them. And I know for me one of the big fears early on was, was that fear of what would her life be like if she couldn't communicate? Um, so we, I have played a bit with the um, the duodo to speech or text to speech um, app on the phone um, and every so often I kind of have little jokes with them or conversations with them using that um, just yeah just and it, it's reassuring. I remember seeing her like half an hour after the first time she had the neuronode put on and just being absolutely blown away at Kirsten at how quick how quickly you could use it to do stuff that was fun and funny and meaningful and practical and actually opened up um, communication in the room that you were in but also communication with the other side of the world. Just recently I wrote a reasonably long piece using the neurodote um, and it really it reminded me about how joyful the process of writing is. I think the, the time before that I wrote a long piece I kind of had other people doing a fair bit of the typing for me um, and there's something something about the process of actually composing words yourself and using your own body even if it's a, a twitch of a thumb <laughs> to kind of put those words onto paper or a screen it helps to make the ideas of the structure come into being up in a quite a powerful way. It's still a bit slower than, well a fair bit slower than writing used to be for me. Um, and going back to edit is a bit harder than it used to be. Um, but I actually think that the combination of those two things um, in some ways has helped me to kind of write more deliberately. Yeah. Um, or I have time to think about what word is coming next and to choose maybe not the best word but to choose well, to choose mindfully and carefully. I'm so grateful for predictive text so that when I'm kind of sending off a reply to a text message or sending an email or something, that just makes the process of writing much more efficient. I, I've only tried this and I guess. Um, I gaze didn't work particularly well with me. I'm not sure if it's because of my glasses or what it was. Um, and also, um, I gaze tends to work with the bigger screen, which I felt kind of got in the way of my, kind of blocked off my communication between me and the world. At some point that I'll switch to an iPad probably, but for me, I'm quite liking just the phone as this 
little square that I could control and do lots of stuff with. Um, yeah, and it just, it works. I mean, obviously Peter's passion and commitment to your know, is fabulous and it's, yeah, his kind of care of me and the other people who use it is wonderful and helpful. Facebook's probably my main form of communication. I'm checking my emails, I'm Googling things, I'm playing 500 with a dodgy gap against stupid computers who don't bid very well. Um, but that's still quite fun. Yeah, so writing, using the notes and pages function on the phone. Yeah, texting, sorry, yes, yes, I'm texting. texting. Um, um, yeah, so I can answer the phone using the Jira node. If I'm here at my daughter's in the bedroom, in her bedroom, I'll call her sometimes to get some help. And I know of people who have been shut in with MND, who haven't had access to that technology in time. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, it was a real relief to know that there was yeah, the possibility of communication and controlling mm. things available. One way or another, Kirsten would be able to maintain communication. Mm.